So let's start with question number four. Can we see a small sample of how WWF works? Okay, till now what we have done is that we have done almost theory and uh, but it was important that we should know all this theory. So we have talked about leaf activities and composite activities. We talked about what development environment will need to create workflow projects. Then we talked about the different kind of workflows that is uh, sequential workflow and the state machine workflow. Now what we'll do is that in this uh, question, what we'll do is that we will try to create a simple sequential workflow which will display just hello one and then hello two. So in other words, there are two activities in this workflow. The first activity will display hello one in the DOS prompt and the second activity will then and the second activity will then display hello two. So hello one will be executed first and hello two will be executed later on. And what we'll do is that using the designer will change the activity sequence and then we'll try to display hello two first and hello one later on. Now when you do a new project uh, in Visual VS 2008 uh, Enterprise Edition or a standard edition, uh, what you will find is that you will find a workflow tab here. So click on the workflow tab and you will see that you can create a lot of different types of workflow like you can create a SharePoint workflow, you can create probably a simple state machine workflow, you can create create an empty project of workflow etc. Uh, what we'll do is that we'll just uh, select sequential workflow for our hello one and hello two activities and let's give a nice name to it uh, my simple hello workflow. Okay, so once you have created a project, you will see three important things. One is your solution explorer, which basically has the important files for the project. The second you will see the toolbox and the third one you will see is a workflow designer. Now the workflow designer is where you can uh, put your activities, you can define your sequence, you can design it in a more visual manner. So you can see that this is a start and this is the end of your activity and then you can drop your activities in sequence which you desire in between the workflow. In the toolbox you will see a SharePoint workflow. Uh, we are not covering SharePoint workflow in this Windows workflow foundation uh, questions and answers. But what you can do is that you can see uh, the SharePoint questions and answers video series where we have discussed SharePoint workflow in more detail. So currently we will be concentrating only on the Windows workflow. So let's go to Windows workflow 3.0 and let's drop up the first activity that is hello1 and then later we will drop up the second activity that is hello2. So select the code activity and drop it up in the workflow. Now in order to uh, uh, in order to write the code for this activity, you need to double click on the code activity uh, code activity uh, element and you can see that there is an event here code activity underscore execute one. So what we'll do is that we will just write here console dot write line hello one. Now let's go again back to the designer and drop the second code activity code activity two toolbox and let me put the code activity two. Now what I've done is that I have put the code activity two after code activity one. So that's my code activity two. And you can see that as soon as you start coding, you will see that the red marks are going off. It says that this has this already has a code associated with it. Code activity is nothing but it's it's a small snippet of code which def which defines activity. So let's write our second activity that is hello2. So let me just do a control C, control V, hello2. And then now let's execute the project. So basically what should happen is code activity 1 should run first and display hello1 and code activity 2 should run later on and display hello2. So that's what you can see on your screen. You basically have hello1 executed first and hello2 later on. Now what I'll do is that I'll just go to my workflow designer again and I'll change my activity sequence. So let me put up code activity 2 first and code activity later on. Right and now let's run this project. So what you will see is that uh, the hello2 is displayed first and the hello1 is displayed later on. So in other words we have changed our sequence of our activities. Now definitely you'll be thinking that when I define my project I can't give uh, my user this Visual Studio to change the activity and the workflows. Uh, basically what happens is there is something called as a ZOML file, an XML file which basically defines your sequences and activities. So we'll be discussing about that in the later coming videos. But yes, it's very easy to even change workflows uh, in your production environment. It's not that you need, a, the, you need the designer to be installed 
uh, on your user's machine. So this was a simple workflow and uh, we'll be discussing more complicated workflows in the coming times. Now this workflow is a sequential type workflow. So we have not touched the state machine workflow still. So remember that this is a sequential workflow because here the workflow is in control of which activities are going to be executed. I hope that this session was useful and see you in the coming up sessions.